it's Bucky here again. And I wanted to talk to you the second part of mortgages. We mentioned that we're going to talk more details about mortgages and things that can occur inside of mortgages. And some of those can cause some real problems when you're trying to sell your house. So be aware of these clauses and we're going to go into detail, probably too much boring detail, but it's important for you guys to understand all the different types of clauses that may or may not affect your property when you're trying to sell it and how you're trying to sell it. So we're very aware of that, especially if we have to get creative in the way we're going to structure the deal, depending on the situation with that owner of their property and what their special needs are. We try to accommodate everything we can, but sometimes we get a roadblock when it comes to mortgages and the clauses that are written inside them. So what is a mortgage clause? Uh, here's a definition that I just pulled up on Google. If you typed in mortgage clauses, it's basically a detailed provision contained in the mortgage contract, meaning that is something that you signed and said you understood that they have special rights or powers or remedies, meaning mortgage contracts can contain various covenants, which are promise or agreements between the lender and yourself as the borrower. Okay. So what does that mean? This has happened um, often in the case of when people try to sell a property to other individuals, uh, maybe a contract for deed, and there's a due on sale clause. So you cannot legally sell your property to another owner for sell by owner and keep the mortgage back if it has a due on sale clause. You can do it, but if the banks get wind of it, they could call your note due on sale, meaning that you have to come up with all the money at once and you may not be in that situation, nor the guy or the person that you did the contract for deed for. So just be very aware of that. We're going to spell out a lot of different clauses here. So the whole goal of this um, video here is really just kind of give you an understanding and awareness of all the different mortgage clauses that are out there. Because when we buy houses now, it's also, we have to look out for these. And we just want to make sure that everybody that's involved in the situation, we understood what we're all getting into. And if there's any red flags that pop up at the last minute, because we don't want disappointment from your end, nor disappointment on our end if we can't close on your property or alert banks or we just we always follow the line of caution we don't want to cross the line so we've been helping people for years and we are not in the business to getting ourselves in trouble so let's go deep into what our mortgage clauses every mortgage loan has several clauses that state the rights of the mortgagor and the mortgagee during the term of the loan agreement meaning that there are various clauses or provisions that may be found in the debt agreement. That's what a mortgage is. It's a debt agreement between you and the lender. So there's an acceleration clause sometime. Lenders usually insist that this is put in place as an acceleration clause that makes the entire debt due in the event of a default. This clause precludes the necessity for the lender to bring any lawsuits against the same mortgage for late payment. This clause usually states that if the covenants are breached, including the obligation to pay the sums are secured by the mortgage when due, the full amount is due immediately. The declaration of full payment is due at the option of the lender. These aren't out there very often anymore. So we just want to be aware of those. The renegotiation rate clause. The rene renegotiation rate clause is a series of short-term loans secured against a long-term mortgage. The short-term loans are automatically renewable in equal intervals of three to five years. The mortgage term may not exceed 40 years. The monthly payments are made in equal installments. However, at the end of the life of the short-term loan, the interest rate may be changed. Changes are based on the movement of the index of the federal home loan bank boards, recently monthly national average contract mortgage rate index. Wow, that's a lot of information. The interest rate is the only term that may be altered. Okay, you probably heard of adjustable rate mortgages. Those can be in place like that. Uh, years ago, I made a mistake with one of those and I got myself in trouble. But you live and you learn. And that's the nice thing about myself is I've been through a lot of different situations and myself personally, and I can understand the pains that you can go through if you're put into one of these situations. So again, it's an interest rate modification which results in the change of a monthly payment. So your payment could go up 
and when they sell you the loan, they're going to tell you it's probably going to go down. But in most cases, it's going to go up. This is another clause that we have to look for. It's called a prepayment clause. The prepay means to pay off the debt before the end of the loan. A lot of people will do this, you know, especially if they're uh, conservatives and they want to pay off their debt and have no debt. A lot of people accelerate, pay more money down on their mortgage. Under the traditional common law, the mortgager has no right to prepay a mortgage uh, unless the right is explicitly provided by a prepayment clause. In some states, uh, this law is reserved. Now, any note that is silent as to the right or the obligatory to prepay the note in advance of the statutory maturity date may be prepaid in full by the obligator or successor without interest or penalty. What does that mean? That's a lot of in-depthness. Basically, a pre prepayment clause states that whether the penalty or prepayment with extra payments directly to reduce the principal up on which the interest is computated or eliminates the last payment, whether the number of the size of extra payment in any one year are restricted, some lenders try to discourage a fast turnover of funds, which is costly to them by imposing prepayment, prepayment penalties during the early years, right? Why does a lender want to eliminate that? Well, in the early years, if you look at your mortgage, you're paying all interest, right? Probably 80 to 90% of your payment is interest. You know, you take a look, go, go look at your loan if you, if you don't believe me. Pull up your statement if you just picked up a house or, you know, had a recent mortgage done and look how much is applied to the interest of the loan and look how much is applied to the principal of the loan and how much is uh, usually put into uh, setbacks for, you know, taxes and insurance. So it's interesting when you look at that. Another thing is a variable rate clause. The variable rate clause ties the interest rate to some specific index of market interest rates, meaning that the market rates fluctuate either periodically, usually monthly. Payment of this loan maturity would increase or decrease depending on the rate. Until 1980, the federal chartered savings loan were precluded from increasing a loan's monthly payments. However, the financial deregulation um, from SNL restriction, now they can make these type of loans in which periodically payments may vary. That's a lot of clauses, okay? I don't know how much of this you guys really wanna know, but there is some important one in here. So let's talk about a subordination clause. A lien holder may consent to place his or her interest in the property at a lower priority than another lien holder through the use of a subordination clause, right? What does that mean? This can get you in trouble, okay? Let's look at a property that is at a sheriff's sale or, and, and you think you're gonna go buy it and to come to find out it was subordination loan that they're, deep, <coughs> that they're defaulted on, right? So when we buy houses now in Tulsa, we have to make sure that what loan they are defaulted on isn't a secondary or subordination loan, right? Because there could be uh, another indebtor that has the greater equity in the property, right? Meaning that there could be two loans. So you want to make sure that you're not trying to buy up a property thinking that you're going to get it for this, for this great deal because they're in default, or if you're trying to help them out of default and realize that they had two different loans in this property. So you need to understand what position in line that mortgage that you're dealing with is in fact on that property to ensure that you don't find yourself in trouble by thinking that you're helping them out of a situation and realize that there's actually two mortgages on the property, meaning that there's a second and you just want to understand how the pecking order happens, right? Cool. So be aware of those. Let's go into the do on sale clause because this, this is the one that catches most people off guard. So traditional common law permits a buyer to purchase a property that's been mortgaged and preserve the existing mortgage unless the mortgage contains a clause to accelerate a loan upon sale. The due on sale clause is especially important to lenders in the world of vital interest rates. Without it, buyers tend to preserve low interest rate mortgages as long as possible by purchasing a second mortgage financing rather than refinancing the existing loan. Okay. 
I mean, that's where we're at. We, we've had low interest rates forever. I mean, you know, since the housing bust, you know, so a lot of people are getting seconds on their home. So we have to be aware of that, what we're getting ourselves into. That's why it's important that we always close at a title company when we buy houses. Now it's all suck. The clauses discussed are variety in this section. We want to understand that <clears throat> the ones that are found in the mortgage notes, there are many different things. Fortunately, for home, for home mortgages, uh, the influence of the secondary mortgage market and agency has recently encouraged the widespread of the use of standard home mortgage contract, meaning the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation. Okay, so most of these typical mortgages that are being written are, if, you know, are backed up by Freddie or Fannie, and and those type of mortgages are a little bit different. But you have to be aware of these okay? as you're going to buy properties or if you're trying to sell your property. You're trying to get creative the way you're selling it. You need to understand what is in my mortgage clauses. So in other words, I will not bore you anymore by going deeper into clauses, but I would caution you to understand two things out of this. Does your property have a due on sale clause if you're trying to do a contract for deed or owner finance back to another individual? Secondly, I would make sure if you're buying a property or if you're selling a property or you're buying a property from somebody else because it looks like a good deal, make sure there isn't more than one mortgage on the property. If you have other questions, we are glad to help you. We are not mortgage experts, but we deal with these issues all day long. We do have on our team mortgage experts that can answer questions. I have no idea what they're talking about, but that's why I have a team. I don't have to know everything. I get to point my finger in the direction of the experts. So feel free to call us. If you have questions about the way your property is held or if you can transfer it or what goes into paying off your mortgage early or any of those type of questions, we are happy to help you in any way possible. Remember, we buy houses now, Tulsa. We thank you. Stay tuned for more videos about real estate.